All right, everybody, let's get this started. Jeff from Modus Games, back at you again. And today's a real special day, if you can tell by the title of the video up there. We have none other from world-famous voice actress Kira Buckland of Near Automata fame with us today. What's up, Kira? Hi, what's up? Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you so much for making time for us. Really appreciate it. I know you're super busy and all that. And, uh, you know, we, we stand you here at... <laughs> thank you guys so much uh, how's how's everything going with you it's going well i got my coffee coffee's always good yeah i got my coffee too over here i drank it way too quickly so i'm gonna be like really energetic during this interview plus nice. like you know. <laughs> um but yeah let's just go ahead and, and jump right into it right now so for those not initiated could you give us a quick summary of who you are um, so I am a voice actress. I've been doing voice acting since about 2004 total. Um, I am doing the narration for Degrees of Separation, which I'm super excited about. And aside from this project, I've also worked on quite a lot of video games, um, stuff like Street Fighter, Near Automata, Fire Emblem Heroes, um, Dead or Alive, Ace Attorney, Soul Calibur, and a bunch of other stuff. So basically every video game that's been released in the past 10 years well i'd like to think that but <laughs> <laughs> so who did you play in all those um that you listed oh um well well take your pick which one because uh, um there's so, a lot of them yeah so near automata 2b um and uh, ace attorney trucy trucy Oh, that was yeah. the, the latest one, the uh, Ace Attorney 6, I think? Yeah, yeah, Spirit of Justice. Oh, man, I need to get on that. I heard that was the best one yet, but I haven't been able to get on that yet. Um, and Dangarampa? Yeah, I was in both 2 and 3. Um, I was Hyoko Sayonji and Kirumi Tojo. Oh, oh, I had no idea that you were in 2. Okay, I didn't even see that. That's awesome. Okay, that's <laughs> Very awesome. Very different character types. So, like... You, you, you're doing a lot of these like AAA titles as well, but in the past you've been doing like small indie flash animations from like the Newground days, like Brawl like Taunts and, and stuff like that. Game. How does it feel going from like a smaller role just from a few years ago to pretty much the icon you are now? Well, you know, it all happened very slowly, so um, it definitely was not really an overnight thing i know a lot of people when they haven't heard of a certain actor before they're like oh they just kind of came up out of nowhere but you know for like years and years we are auditioning we're trying to get our foot in the door different places we're um you know doing everything we can so i mean for me it was a very slow process because i've been wanting to do this since like 2004 so um you know it's been like it's been a process i moved out to la in like 2011 and you're from and alaska right yeah and so kind of like ever since then, I've been working to sort of build that up. So, I mean, I guess if there was any moment where it was kind of like, oh, wow, things are finally happening. It is when I booked 2B just because um, Nier happened to really blow up. But, you know, aside from that, it's it's all been a very slow um, hill to climb up, I guess you could say. Gotcha. So there's a lot of consistency. Like, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of like, trials and tribulations that you have to go through. And, and sometimes some Yeah, not to make an ace attorney other. pun, but just saying. Right, right. <laughs> um... So, were there any voice actors that you're looking up to, like, as you were growing from 2004 onward? Oh, sure. But, I mean, these days I also look up to a lot of my friends because a lot of us are pretty close and we support each other in the things that we do. And, you know, a lot of times inspiration that I get for performances might even come from the people that I hang out with. Nice. Anyone you want to give shout-outs to? Um, <laughs> there's so many good people. Uh, I guess like somebody who's been really helpful and really supportive throughout my career is Ben Diskin. He is amazing. He's, he's a very close time. friend of mine and he's always been there to help us when we have questions and, you know, I don't know. So like a nice little support group, like someone you could always hold yeah, on to. Yeah, I've got like my little coffee crew. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you guys are all up in um, the uh, the northern LA area, right? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, it's just like a community of voice actors, basically. Yeah, I mean, obviously, nothing's perfect in any community, but I think when people are doing this for a job, there's kind of a sense of, like, hey, we should support each other because we're all going for the same thing, even if we're technically competing against each other. Right, and that totally makes sense. It's unlike anything else. Like, I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of... Um, <sighs> Kind of like family-esque values, you know? Like, 
Is there? Are, yeah, I there... hear in Texas it's the same way because that's kind of the other um, voice acting hub, if you will. And people say it's like a family over there too, with like um, the Funimation crowd. Oh right, right, right. Okay, so uh, so you have the the um, uh, the Burbank crowd and then the the Texas crowd. Right. Is there any other like voice acting groups uh, that you can think of? Well, those are kind of the main places where, you know, at least they do, like, anime, JRPGs, like, the kind of stuff that we work on a lot. Um, with the internet, there's more and more options for people to maybe do a little game work if they don't live in L.A. or Texas, but I'd say those are still kind of the major areas that you need to be in. Gotcha. Okay. So, how important did you say it was for your career for you to move from Alaska to L.A.? Oh, completely necessary. If I were still up in Alaska, I might be, you know, maybe able to do like a few indie games here and there from home or whatever. But, you know, so much of the stuff that I do, probably at least like 80% of the work that I do, I have to physically go in and record. Gotcha. Is there any reason why you have to physically be there? Um, a lot of times they want to have like the clients there. Um, the director wants you to physically be there, um, especially for dub or anything where you have to match picture, which sometimes you do in games too, then just for like technical reasons, it's um, it's a lot better to do in person. They want everyone recorded on the same setup so that the sound qualities don't sound different when they're mixed into the game. Um, you know, and a lot of stuff, it's just easier to do in-house. Renting a remote studio can be really right costly. So distance. by just kind of, you know, and having them do it, everybody do it at the facility. The they're not paying like staff and paying for studio time elsewhere. Gotcha. Okay. So it's like a they cost efficiency sort of thing. Plus like the personal connection, I'm assuming from like being able to see each other face to face is very important. Yeah, you know, just to be able to have people like there, you know, in real time doing it. Gotcha. Makes sense. Um, so you kind of already answered this, but there's, you know, so many aspiring voice actors out there. A lot of them look up to you, which is really cool. Which but, I'm like, why? <laughs> no, 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 but there's a good reason. But a lot of them don't know how to get their foot in the door. So, like, for those people, what recommendations could you give to them for, like, kickstarting and maintaining a voice acting career? You already went a little bit in detail about, like, how it's been a, a long grind and, and a lot of it isn't recognized. Uh, since for 15 years, I believe, uh, you said. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, is well, there anything else? Yeah, um, so I run a community called Voice Acting Club. It's just voiceactingclub.com. And if you follow that link, it'll take you to our forums. And I have a big post that's like stickied at the top and it says how do I get into voice acting and I highly recommend reading that and there's also um, I link to a couple other people's guides in there too about similar things but um, the biggest thing and I know this is like a broken record because every actor says the same thing is to get acting training because a lot of people say like oh I have a good voice or I can do these different voices or I can sound like these existing characters or whatever and like you know that's cool like there's um, you know being able to do different things vocally is important but the biggest thing and the thing that's going to get you booked is your acting so you know you can go in and you can be like i sound like this celebrity or whatever but it's like they're not going to hire you if you don't embody the character in the way that you perform the lines the way that you bring that character to life um you know just to kind of tie it into the current project when we were recording the narration for degrees of separation i think one of the challenges with narration is you don't want it to start sounding like the same you don't want it to you know you have to keep people engaged even if you're narrating a lot so what i would kind of do is you know i'd look at the lines and be like okay how can i bring this to life like how can i connect with this emotionally in a way that it's going to like engage the listener and to make them interested and you know and also because we had great writing <laughs> that really helped a lot too thank so. you chris avalon <laughs> just yes. putting that out there yeah chris avalon um just for those that don't know uh he wrote fallout new vegas which is like incredible oh, I did like, not even know that. oh yeah awesome. there you go yeah so a few more questions actually about that so when when you're saying taking acting classes uh you're you're saying basically when when you're your voice acting you're also it's not just your voice but you're actually emoting in real life as well right yeah acting is the biggest part of it so i think um you know any kind of acting training even if it's not voice acting specific even stuff like theater can be helpful improv like um, even like on camera. I mean, I don't do like stage or on camera. I'm purely a voice performer, but some of the best stuff that I learned early on in my career was just from taking like, you know, school acting classes or whatever. Um, 
and and you can also take voice specific classes too but i think it's just really important to know how to kind of break down a character and to say like okay here's what this character's like thought process is here's you know their relationships to the other characters here and a lot of this stuff you're not like sitting down and you know and analyzing it it's kind of all like just going in your head in real time because generally as voice actors we don't get the scripts before we go into our session um we don't hear the other actors you know we record individually so for example like when i was recording near automata um kyle 9s and i we didn't we weren't playing off each other we didn't hear what each other did until the game came out and that's the norm for video games or for that's you know, absolutely crazy so basically you you have to not only get in your own mind but like what the other person is thinking and how you would respond to that exactly so it usually helps you know we can see the line that's before ours and obviously having a great voice director as we did is um really important for that too because the director will kind of know how they want the scene to play out and be able to tell you like okay um you know here's what's going on and here's what you're responding to and that sort of thing. Are there any schools in particular that you would recommend Another for anyone in, I guess, the L.A. area? Yeah, um, there's the GVAA, Global Voice Acting Academy, and they actually do a lot of stuff like you can be anywhere, I believe, with them. Um, I've gotten a couple demos with them in the past and done some coaching and stuff like that. Um, there's also the, if you want to get into dubbing, there's the Adventures in Voice Acting Workshop that Bing Zoom Entertainment runs. Um, that's a company I've been working with for a number of years now. And um, they'll teach you how to do, like, dubbing or, like, there's also, I think, like, foundations of, like character creation class or something like that where it's like um you know how to break down audition copy and be like here's how i'm going to approach this character that sort of thing because i mean it's like oh even like singing training i forgot to mention that but if you're looking for like the technical aspect of it and training that up like even if you're not a good singer i'm not as you saw in our voice test but um you know just learning it was like i don't know i i'm i still am wiping the tears out of my eyes right now but <laughs> I'll, I'll put a clip of that in between here. <laughs> yeah, feel free. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's like breath support and like um, just like pitch, uh, voice control, like all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, it's not just about the, the emoting and the acting, but there's also a very technical aspect to voice acting, especially if you're doing localization work. Like if you're dubbing a show or dubbing a game, there's a lot of time restraints. Um, sometimes you'll be dubbing to picture, like you'll have cutscenes. Mm -hmm. um, other times they'll say, okay, the length of the voice in the original language is this, so you working have to match together. this. I mean, one of the cool the things I think about working on Degrees of Separation the was that so because the they first voice together. was in English, then I didn't have timing restrictions or performance Evidence restrictions. I got to kind of do my own thing with it. Them. So you were basically just given a script, and, and could you help me go through the process of like what the, I guess, first day of recording Degrees of Separation lines was like? Yeah, so I was already familiar with the, the project and the script because we did like scratch, um, like a test recording for it, just so they could kind of, you know, get the feel of what was going on in the game and stuff like that and how it was going to sound with the narration. And then when it came time to do the final records, because I did the initial stuff just from home, um, but then when it came time to do the final records we went to a local studio and um we had you know people from the company call in and kind of listen and you know maybe give me direction on some of the lines and you know we just had the script there and usually i would do like a couple takes of each line um we'd go through i don't know maybe like a scene at a time and then we go back and they give me notes on okay we want like this line to you know emphasize this word or have more of this feeling or you know whatever it is right so it's it's kind of just like you you put a product out there and they say oh this is great but uh could you be more emotional here or something like that i don't know what the words would be um well yeah a lot of voice acting is a very collaborative process you know you're throwing out your first instincts as an actor and then you work with either like the director or the writer or you know um mm -hmm. people from like in a localized project people from the localization company and you know to kind of like help bring their vision to life if you will is there anything that you would say that as an aspiring voice actress or actor, something that you would want to avoid? Any any missteps or anything like that that a lot of people seem to get into? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I think um, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is to not get entitled or to get 
arrogant about certain things because I see some people who are up and coming and they're like, well, I'm really successful on YouTube or on Twitch or whatever. And it's like, I mean, that's great. But when you get into the actual industry, like (laughs) you're just like another, you know, you have to compete like everyone else. So it doesn't matter like, well, I did all this stuff on the Internet or I did this stuff where I came from. And because people ask me sometimes because I started online, they're like, oh, did that help you? And it was like, well, in terms of like it gave me practice. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I recommend, you know, people to start online and kind of like do a bunch of indie projects or hobby projects and kind of get the feel for things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of like it doesn't matter. You could be like popular on the Internet or whatever. That's not going to get you roles unless it's like a stunt cast thing. You know, it's like you have to you have to prove yourself just like everyone else does. So I think um, right, being it's a very talent oriented like, field. It's 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 still like half connections, right? Would you say that or or no? Um, yeah, I think like opportunity, knowing the right people, being in the right place at the right time is important. Mm-hmm. But I, I also wrote this huge article that I suggest um, people to read as well. It's about why like the whole idea of like oh if I get my big break like that's kind of a problem because um, I think a lot of people think that if they just like get discovered somehow that that's what their career is going to be like that's how they're going to make it. But in reality it's kind of getting that right person to notice you or whatever getting a door open that's only like one step because we're freelancers you know it's like you can get that one job you can be the lead in a series you can be the lead in a huge game that doesn't guarantee you any future work for sure Um, always have to be looking for stuff so yeah i think a lot of people do place too much emphasis on luck sometimes when you also have to be doing your part and you have to be working really hard because even if you happen to meet somebody tomorrow who's like oh i can get you all these auditions or whatever would you be ready to compete with the people who are already in that talent pool, you know? Right. And I, I could imagine that, like, the people in the talent pool as well are, like, also going through the same exact thing. You know, they they have their own connections. They have their own different emotional take, basically. Uh, so you, you really have to, like, consider all these different fields. And not every single role is made for every person, obviously, right? Yeah, I think we all want to believe we can do anything. And of course, anything that's thrown at us, we're going to try it. But, you know, the reality is sometimes maybe that role that we really want, maybe we're not the best fit for it. And maybe our friend is and that's okay. And we should be happy for them. And, you know, it's like there's just a lot of like mindset stuff that goes into it, which I write a lot of articles on. Um. So uh, just for everybody out there, we're going to be putting these articles in our metadata. If you're interested in that, please click. I think the other thing too is that it is really, really competitive now. When I first started wanting to get into voice acting, which is like in 2004, 2005, there was really not a lot of competition online at the time at least. And you know, even in like official dubs and stuff, you'd hear like the same like 20 people or whatever. But now there's like, there's like thousands of people trying to do this. So I'm glad that I started when I did But for people starting now, I mean, on one hand, they have a lot more opportunities. There's a lot more things that are accessible from wherever you are that you can do in the meantime before you move to like California or Texas or wherever. But there's also like so much competition and there's so many good people that the standards are really, really high now. Right. And that makes sense. It's um, it's almost like every other industry really out there, especially for video games, because video games, you know, they've blown up a ton since 2004 also take a look at like you know the work that you've done uh and then they're like oh i want to join in on this as well so it's just it's it's just a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy at that point yeah and so i think it's really important for anyone wanting to get into this to be willing to work really hard because if you you know aren't willing to put in the effort or the time or whatever then there's other people who are so so you lend your voice as the narrator that goes through the changing stages of relationships between rhyme and ember um was there any inspiration for you personally to help express that story to the players um i think especially for kind of narration stuff when you're sort of bringing this whole scene to life like these situations i think um visualization helped me a lot so you know i didn't see a ton of visuals of the game because everything's still kind of like in progress but um you know just from using the little bit that i saw a lot of times i would just imagine what's going on in my head and i think that really um i guess added color to it kind of helped bring it to life because you know when they're like a lot of times the narrator is describing 
exactly what's going on in the scene. Like, oh, you know, there's this cave and there's, you know, this ice and blah, 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 blah. And so you're kind of like setting up the whole scene. So as I was describing it, I would just like imagine that in my head, like imagine what exactly it looked like, um, you know, just kind of like being there. And I think visualization is really important. Like I tell people that I'm, um, you know, mentoring online and stuff, like when they're doing effort sounds or whatever to like, okay, so you're swinging a sword. You have to imagine you're actually holding a sword. Whereas if you're stabbing with like a knife, you have to imagine like you're doing that or whatever. So um, acting, they say, is a lot of like playing pretend and imagining things and I think it's really important to use your imagination because if you just read words off a page it's not going to be emotionally connected like there's it's going to be like flat there's nothing behind it you're not telling a story Mm -hmm. and I think specifically for this project it was really important that I tell a story as the narrator so not only is it like about like oh well I'm really trying to tell the story these two lovebirds going at it or anything uh, I'm going to probably edit that one out, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's also just like even describing the scene and stuff like that. You really have to apply yourself in each line that you say, right? As they move. The yeah, and it also helped because Chris would say, for example, okay, in this scene, like here is kind of the overall emotion that we're going for. Like in this scene, you're seeing the two characters have a lot of conflict, so you know we want kind of that that sense of like that frustration or you know um, mm-hmm. just kind of knowing the overall emotional tone they were going for i think helped a lot with how to approach each scene that's super cool actually i I didn't expect that at all um so both ember and rhyme uh you know they have varying personalities which you found out through the script uh and you uncover that through their adventures everyone at home when the game comes out uh february 14th by the way uh it's uh everyone's gonna find how these two kind of unfold and and get to know each other and stuff like that which character did you find relating uh, yourself relating to the most and which traits from them really resemble you honestly i can kind of see myself in both of them in a weird way um because when I shut down, I'm an ice prince. And when I'm, like, really <laughs> passionate about something, I'm a fire princess. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything in particular that you liked about both of them? Um, I just kind of liked their um, how they work together. Like, their contrasting personalities. And even, like, in the visuals, how you can kind of, like, just see, like, Rhyme's world versus Ember's world. And, like, you know, just how you see them relating to each other. But also when there's that conflict. And, like, you, you like, feel for them. You're like, I want you to be happy together. <laughs> It's, it's like with Neuro Automata, how it's like with 2B and 9S. I'm like, I just want my children to be happy. Thank you. I know. And then, like, most of the endings make you cry instead. So it's... Uh, yep. <laughs> but, you know, there, there's... We don't know how it's... I mean, I know how it's going to end, but I can't spoil it. And there might be more than one ending to this game. So You'll have to play the game. You'll have to play. So how was your overall experience with working on it? Like, do you have any stories to tell? Oh, um, it was a lot of fun. I guess, like... In terms of stories, I was really sick one of the days when we recorded because Uh I had just gotten back from Texas and I got like violent food poisoning. So I was just like, it was, it was an eel, like, um, we went to a sushi restaurant and I eat sushi like all the time. So I have like an iron stomach when it comes to raw fish, but I think like the eel, something about the eel roll and it was really good. But then I'm just like, guys, I'm not feeling well. I think I have to go throw up and then, and then I just couldn't stop and So, like, the next day, I was staying with my friend down there, and she had three cats, and I just could not even leave the bed. I was so sick. You couldn't leave because of the cats, right? Because the cats are too cute, you know. Well, that, too. But I was like, I have these little angels looking out for me. (laughs) So, this is away from degrees of separation, but I want to talk more about your personal interests, which, from what I gathered from your social media, uh, both uh, cats and David Bowie. Let's talk about them. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about what what is your favorite cat color? How about that? Well, I love the pumpkin spice cats, and I know you you have one of those. And every time you post pictures of him, I'm just like, this boy is precious and needs to be protected. Everyone says that he needs to get a job and all that because all the pictures of him (laughs) are just... He does have a job. He's being a pumpkin spice latte. It's a very hard job. He has to stay warm all the time, too. Like... I've he has never to be seen. cute. I know, and then he just lays on his back. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just. This is the best interview in the world, by the way. <laughs> just... Yeah. So I I have four, but Jareth, my my pumpkin spice cat, he's like the same way. He's like life is so hard. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, you get to be like cute and spoiled all the time. I know, I know. And they just like they they wink and smile, and then like if you get too close to them, they bite you. Do your cats bite? Mm -hmm. Um, Jared is more of like a scratcher. Okay. Um. So sometimes if he gets in a certain mood, especially if he's kind of high on catnip, he'll just like swipe at you when you try to pet him. Well, that's, but it's that's like he's trying move. to play. He's not really being like aggro, but he plays too rough. Right. So we have this little kitten named Cupcake who's like super bratty. Um, and he'll like play too rough with her sometimes. The thing is, I think orange cats know that they're regal. I think that they know uh -huh. that they're the best. Yep. So they can get away Jared with anything. Jared is the pumpkin king, and he demands that you address him as such. I'm not even kidding. Really? Okay. Um, favorite David Bowie song? Star from Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars album. Mm. It's um, kind of an underrated song, but I love it so much. I think my second favorite is Little Wonder, which is also kind of an underrated song. What do you think about Let's Dance? Oh, of course. I, I love it. Um, I just wish that the radio here would play more than like the same four David Bowie songs. Because I'm like, the man had five decades of music. You guys are barely scraping the surface. So whenever people tell me like, I don't know, I'm not really into David Bowie's music. I'm like, what? Have you heard like three songs? Like, you know, yeah, no. I can find something for you that you will like because he went through so many different genres. And favorite David Bowie movie, which we all know. Oh, yeah, Labyrinth. Of course. <laughs> Kira, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciated it. It was not as awkward because you are a great interviewee. So thank you so much. Oh, for I me feel, feel like I'm awkward. But, oh, you know. well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm king of awkward. But thank you so much for uh, being awkward with me. How about that? 50 <laughs> 50 right there. No, that works. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Get your cat for me. I will. I, I'll post more pictures of him lying around not having a job. All right, everyone, that is it for now. Feel free to follow and subscribe for exclusive looks and content for Degrees of Separation. But until next time, be good people. See you next time.